Hey guys, on today's episode of the Hustling Agent Show, I have Mr. Pat Hyben. Pat was the top agent in the universe in the 2000s. He had his podcast, which is one of my favorites, Real Estate Rockstars with Pat Hyben, and was very successful as a realtor in the last downturn. All these things made him a natural option to be my guest. Check it out. All right, folks. Um, today I'm here with Pat Hyben. Uh, Pat uh, used to be the top agent in the planet um, and uh, has Real Estate Rockstars podcast. as a podcast that I listen to as a new agent. So, uh, I've been on twice, thanks to Pat, um, and uh, just used to eat up all the information. So I hit up Pat last night. Number one, he's spoken to hundreds of the top brokers and teams on the planet and different agents. Uh, and I really wanted content for my agents and for other agents and just wanted to you know, get some insight from Pat, who I have tremendous respect for in the real estate game. So Pat, what's been going on, buddy? Sunit, what's going on, man? Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being my second guest, sir. So I'm soon. All right. Yes. Um, so um, what have you been up to during, or before all this happened? Yeah. Well, wow. Good question. Like, so, you know, I had my uh, Real Estate Rockstars podcast, which I sold along with Rebus University uh, back uh, late last year. And I also, you know, up until... Um, Late last year, I would say I had a, a real estate team that was run by um, a, a one of my um, longest running uh, agents and partners, Mike Sloan, and I closed that down and I I, I just kind of um, simplified a lot of stuff, Sunit. I kind of sold everything and then, you know, I... I I, I just wanted to sit back and uh, I live here in Folly Beach, South Carolina. I did something funny. I, um, you know, they have these pedicabs that these people drive. Uh, they're like bicycles and they, they have little carts in the back. And uh, um, I always looked at them whenever we went out to dinner in Charleston. I said, man, that'd be fun to do. And you'd be staying. In great shape and you get up and, um, so happens I met a guy that, uh, that that worked at one of the companies doing that, and he set me up. And so before uh, coronavirus, I was, uh, you know, two nights a week, I was getting out in downtown Charleston and giving people rides for tips in the back of a, a bike cab. And it, it was like one of the funnest jobs I've ever had in my life um, <laughs> with no responsibilities, no overhead, nothing. Um and, and so I was doing that. And then, of course, you know, I have a lot of investments, too. And I just kind of oversee the investments and kind of just switch them around, sell them, buy them, that sort of thing. So that's awesome, man. Like, Barry Howe was, like, super rare in real estate to meet somebody who's almost, like, officially retired from, like, the whole darn thing, right? I'm out, dude. I didn't, you know, I didn't even put my... Um, I didn't even put my license in referrals. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, yeah, put in referrals. I was like, you know what? Psychologically, I just want it to be done. I want it to be over finished, you know, like a chapter that's done. That I, You know, if I want to send somebody a referral or whatever, I, they can pay me for coaching or I can coach them or something or whatever. You know what I mean? We can work something out. But I mean, or they could whatever. But I just I, it's like, you know, it just doesn't feel the same. You know, I just wanted my license to kind of fizzle away after 32 years of being a full-time licensed uh, agent and and have it be done and be, you know, the end of an error. Wow. Era. Era. <laughs> not an <laughs> error. It was definitely not an error. It was the smartest thing I ever did, for sure. Congrats, dude. That's massive. So you've been hanging around the house for a while anyways before any of this, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so, yeah, a little, yeah, um, but, uh, you know, I have two kids, they're grown, they live in Washington, D.C., and they came up like three weeks ago, so they're living living here now. I, I would say they were, you know, when they first came up, we thought they'd be here for a week or something, right, but now it looks like they'll be here for 
you know, half of a year, maybe the way, the way this thing's moving. Um, so, um, but both of them have jobs that enable them to, uh, work on their computers out of here. And we live in a beach town, so it's really kind of nice, you know, uh, if, if anywhere you had to be cooped up, it would be at the beach. So, you know, I'm yeah. lucky, lucky with that. Yeah. Awesome, man. Awesome. So, um, you know, we were talking a little bit prior that, uh, you were, uh, highly productive agent in the 2000s when the market we experienced the market going sideways so i really wanted to get your insight and comparison to what's happening now and where you see this going with just what happened in the past um yeah i mean it's interesting right i think that like there's you know, the people that are in this now, I think you're certainly going to have a lot of agents like not come back from this. Just like, they're just going to be like, yeah, you know, I mean, one thing you're going to, I mean, I guess brokers are going to have to decide whether they want to forego the dues and the, you know, the monthly charges and the shared miscellaneous and the fees and rents and all that stuff. Right. Um, on one hand, and if they don't, you're going to have agents that only sell like one, two houses a year be like, I'm not paying that. Right. So I think you're going to have some fallout of agents, which probably could be a good thing. Cause I think there's probably too many agents now, right? Everybody and their sister now is licensed. Um, the, the strong are going to survive, right? Because the, you know, they're the ones that have, you know, hopefully uh, prepared for this a little bit and, and hopefully have a listing inventory or have some listings that whether they're still on the market or they've been taken off the market, they're going to sell, you know, when we come out of this and there's going to be commissions when we come out of this. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, so at my brokerage, we've lost three agents because of this and two went inactive, two out of three. Yeah. And then we're just starting too, you know? Yeah. Um, so where, what do you see, what do you feel is going to happen to home prices? Mm. I listened to this podcast the other day and it wasn't talking about residential. It was talking about commercial, but it said, the guy said, I wouldn't be surprised if every single piece of commercial properties were 20, 25% less than it was before this happened. Which wow. is interesting because commercial is a little easier to value than residential because it's all valued about the, the rents that you get. So um, if the rents aren't paid because the tenant is out of business or, you know, um, a restaurant, <laughs> you know, or a nail salon or a yoga studio, which are basically closed then the real estate is automatically worth just like the podcast said, just overnight you can blink your eyes and it's worth less, you know? Now that being said, residential is based on comps, right? This house sold for this much. So, you know, that means my house is worth this much. And so the jury won't come out on residential until, you know, people actually are putting their houses on the market after this. Now, what I'm afraid of is a a a rise in inventory based on uh, people withholding their listing like literally like like if I was getting ready to put my house if I had planned in January to put my house on a market on April 15th I don't think I'd be putting it on now right because I wouldn't want people coming in my house today like we like, you know what I mean you just don't want pe randoms walking in your house so I'm going to delay that and I'm probably going to delay it, let's say to the fall because right, you're going to do the spring or you're going to do the fall. So you do the fall. So you delay it to September 1st, right? Which seems logical. Um, and then all of a sudden you have all these people that have delayed to September 1st. Now, if, they're, if the buyers aren't, if the buyers are bent, pent up too, then that's a great market. You have a, tons and tons of transactions and commissions and settlements. And that, that'll be the best case, right? 
But the, the question is going to be, is the demand going to be there? Are buyers going to be like, eh, I don't feel like it. What if another coronavirus, what if a mutation happens next year? What, you know, what if it happens again? What, uh, I got, a, a, you know, I'm behind on my bills. Uh, my credit is screwed up now because of this. The stock market portfolio is less because of this. Or I'm psychologically scared because of this. Um, I don't know. I don't know what's, I just don't know what's going to happen to buy. Certainly the interest rates will still, hopefully are going to, hopefully are going to go down. It's crazy what happened, how they dropped it uh, publicly, but then they went up, you know, for anybody buying a house now is, you know, has to pay a high interest rate. Um, but, but nonetheless, I think uh, hopefully that muddy, situation will sort itself out. Um, but still, they're still going to be low. Even if they're four and a half, they're still very low. Um, yeah. I just don't know, man. I just don't know. It's, it's going to be interesting. What you said, man, see, this is why I'm talking to you right now. I have a ton of active listings right now. Uh, I have huge inventory. Um, showings are down about 30%, right? Um, and I have a bunch of people who are wait who are waiting to sell for this to come out on the other end, right? Um, and none of them, and me as well, for their safety, I ask them, "Do you want strangers walking around in your house?" And everybody says no, right? I have one um, <clears throat> repeat customer who had cancer, and her doctor said, "Don't leave the house." No, yeah, they come over, right? So, and they all want to sell around the same time. So if this thing lifts and everybody goes in the market at the same time, but then a lot of the buyers are maybe unemployed or their credit's gone worse. Well, also, you know, the, the, the lenders have, have toughened their standards. I don't know if you saw that, but yeah, it's like the credit score now is jacked. I don't, it's above my pay grade, but they've changed a lot of things that make it harder. Now they're making it harder, not easier. Yeah. Um, we had a couple people in escrow have to cancel because the loan program, like down payment assistance is gone. Right. So people are canceling. Uh, I've had cancellations from people losing their job as well. Good jobs. Right. You know, that's another thing, right. You know, job losses, right. I mean, they said that, you know, record high unemployment claims this week and next week, I'm sure it'll be even higher. I don't understand unemployment, but I don't think it's anywhere near your salary, right? It's like 30% or something, half maybe. So you yeah. can't, I mean, you can't buy a house with it. Um, yeah. So you're just surviving at that point. And then the banks want to see two years, you know, stability. Um, so yeah, it kind of messes a lot of things up. And if you get laid off now, nobody's hiring, you know, and no one's going to start hiring until, September. Yeah, that's not it. Yeah, you know, less people are, let's say. That's good insight. Yeah, I mean, I had to lay off a department, right? Nine people. Wow. So, um, so yeah, that's a lot of really relevant stuff. So, I mean, next question if you were an agent now, how would you be spending your time? What's advice for realtors out there who are? productive and looking to still make money? Yeah, that's a great question. What a neat thing that I did that I didn't do some guy that I know did. And I, and I, it's not, I didn't even use him as a realtor. I just met him like three months ago, a guy uh, in the beach town I live in has uh, basically, you know, he's been inviting me to the zoom calls that are like, get to know your neighbor zoom calls. And I thought it was kind of neat in that, um, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that live here that I've never met before. I might have seen them walking their dog or something, but I just haven't accosted them and say, hey, what's your name? <laughs> and uh, so he's like, yeah, you can meet uh, other people that live here and, uh, you know, do a Zoom call every Wednesday at six o'clock uh, dinner time, you know, sort of thing, which I think was kind of neat. And I went to one of them and it was kind of cool. I met, a, I met a couple of people and they friended me on Facebook that I didn't know before. Um, 
And uh, stuff like that, I think, is great. I think now, more than ever, you should really be focusing on, uh, you know, what we talk about uh, uh, in, in my book, Six Steps to Seven Figures, which is uh, a dollar productive activities, which are, um, you know, the number one dollar productive activity that you could be doing now is prospecting. So I almost think that, you know, if you have a 10, if you're going to work 10 hours one day, uh, five hours should be prospecting, should be reaching out. Hey, are you okay? What have you been up to? Hey, do you want to do a Zoom call just to catch up? Um, you know, and if they say no, it's no big deal. But I think you're going to, if you ask that of all your past clients, everybody you know, everybody in your sphere, you're going to have a, probably 30% of them say, sure, when's good? And then they're going to, you know, they got, everyone's got free time, right? It's like me and you reconnecting, right? It's like, you asked me last night, I'm like, sure, you know, I, you know, not doing anything, you know, tomorrow afternoon, I'm going to be around. I mean, might as well, you know, catch up with you. So it's the same thing. And I think as an agent, you can, it's a great opportunity to catch up and, and be top of mind uh, as the, as their realtor. Does that make sense? Oh man, it makes total sense. And that's, you know, I mean, that's what is uh, resonating with a lot of people is just, you know, just call everybody, right? And don't be a salesman, which is going to be hard for a lot mm -hmm. of people, right? It's hard for me. Well, but yeah, don't be a salesman. But the good part about it is even if you, I mean, you, you can't really you don't have anything to sell them right now because you know the answer is like, oh, we're not going to go out. You can't say, do you want to go look at houses? Or can I come over and give you, tell you what your house is worth? Because you can't go over. They don't want you over there. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I haven't been leaving my house at all. I have two young kids, a four-year-old and a five-month-old. Scare, you know, scares the crap out of me to leave this place, man. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. You, I mean, you have kids too, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah, I just, I only leave to walk the dog or, or whatever, get outside. But, uh, you know, I don't, I, I haven't, you know, in the last three weeks, I've probably been in my car twice, you know? Same. I actually bought a car the day the lockdown started. It got dropped off here to, to my house, and I've driven it for 10 minutes. <laughs> well, maybe you could go sit in and at least learn it, you know? Yeah, it's got a lot of tech. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so what about, you know, same question, but more looking at, like, broker owners and team leaders. Mm -hmm. What kind of advice would you give them right now? Yeah, that's great. That's a great question because I really well, wonder I mean, what – a selfish thing, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> I hadn't thought I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. And I've talked to some other podcasts and some other people about, you know, real estate as from an agent perspective, but no one's asked me from a broker perspective. So um I'm thinking back to what I may have heard. I know some of the chatter. I know that uh, Gary Keller got on the line with all of his people. And I heard this uh, through um, Daniel Ramsey, uh, who, who, who you know. Um, but anyways, Gary Keller got on um, and said, everybody immediately cut 30% of your costs. Um, so I think that's an interesting statement. And I guess I would have to agree with that. And that's like, you know, you know as agents, we tend to, to subscribe to stuff like Boomtown and 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 lead sources and and anything to to keep us on that hamster wheel and some of it you can't do nothing with right now you can follow up but you you can't do nothing with it so you know yeah so you probably should just start trying to it's a great time to just massively cut costs or cut everything non-essential right um, uh, just so you can survive. I heard another guy say, um, you know, think tactical, not strategic. And strategic would be like, how are we going to win the war? And tactical is like, uh, how are we not going to die? You know? <laughs> you know? And he said, right now is not, not a time to try to move the ball down the field. Right now is a time to kind of just be massive defensive and just be like, just just you know your goal right is to make it through this and 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 come out of this still with 20 active listings and you know and then once once it's uh, 
once we're out of this, then you start moving the, the ball down the field with all these new listings, you know what I mean? And so, um, so I guess, so going back to your question as a broker owner or manager, probably a great time, just like with the agents, um, to reach out to all of the, all of your agents, you know, or, or, you know, start with like your top five agents and just be like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to do a one-on-one -on -one zoom call with the top five, um, one at a time or together. You could do together. You could have a little mastermind right on zoom with, with your top five agents and then your next top five or whatever you want to call it, or all of your agents, all of your rookie agents, right. Or all of your, whatever, you know, and any group of agents, um, second year agents or part-time agents or whatever, you know, anything, you could just have all these meetings with your agents, whether they're group or one-on-one. -on -one, and there's no reason not to do tons of them right every day because you got nothing but time, right? You're there. You're going to have your screen open anyways. Just let somebody else come in and be like, so what are you doing to, um, to get business. And then when they tell you, then hopefully there's something you can think of that, that they're not doing. You give them advice and you'd be like, Oh, you know, Pat Hyben mentioned this guy, Jeremy that lives in, uh, that lives on his, in his beach town. That's having these little get to know your neighbor meetings. You should on zoom, you should do that too. And you know, you know, whatever, you know what I mean? You just, you know how to do it. You got to, it's a, it's kind of a time to go back to the basics, but don't expect immediate gratification, right? It's a great back to the basics time uh, because you're forced to do it. It's like, it's like the old cliche, you know, that says, you know, sit in a corner and do what you're told. Um, well, right now we're all forced to sit in a corner. So it's much easier to do what we're told. Does that make sense? Yeah, no. And you know, it, yeah, it's comforting because the first day that this happened, I called all hundred of my agents. Mm. You know, about 70% of them were shocked, which made me feel good as a leader trying to give them support. Right. Yeah. Um, then on my sales team, cause I have the brokerage and the sales team, uh, the sales team was massive, 35 agents on my team or something, spending boatloads of money on everything. And I went down the list and just started crossing them off, right? So I really got the expenses down, um, but I still have about 1,000 leads coming in a month. And we are transacting at about 50% of where we should be. Like we opened six escrows this week. It should be, you know, and, that, and that's interesting. Are you having any, um, what's going on with your title? Like, is there any issues there or no, no issues? They're still able to get the deed and all that, that government yeah. offices haven't shut down. So, um, I'm in Sacramento, but I live in Yolo County and that's where you see, you see Davis is. I live in a town called West Sacramento. Yolo County is a more rural type of area and the recorder's office has changed their policy that you have to walk in at 8 a.m. something. So that like with the deeds at 8 a.m. only is the only drop off time. So when we were recording um, a bunch of listings on the, the sales, uh, a lot of the buyers were delayed like three days just by getting the deed over to the recorder's office. There was right. a challenge. Uh, so, and people were freaked out about it. Right. Like I needed my house, COVID, COVID, COVID. Why can't I get my keys? Hmm. Yeah. That's a tough one. Yeah. yeah. That's what I would be worried about. But if they're still doing that, that's great. And tight. And you know, if that's all that process is going, I know the mortgage, process is backed up uh, you know I don't you know but at the same time um half is great man because I, I would think I wonder what may I just don't know what may is going to be like I don't you know half is 
half is really good, man. It means like people are buying stuff. I was talking to a guy the other day and he, he, he's an investor and he had three listings and he, and he said, you know, I'm putting these on the market now. I don't care. Now they were all empty. Yeah. And he put them all in MLS and two sold like right away. So like, I think, you know, if you got an empty house, maybe, maybe the empty houses are, are, are the ones that it's a great time probably to sell an empty house where sometimes it's hard to sell an empty house because it's not staged. Yeah. So I have, I put two on today, two on yesterday, uh, three on over the weekend. And I got nine offers on one of my houses over the weekend. Pat. Nine. So let me ask you, all the nine people went and looked at it? Vacant. Yeah. And it's vacant. There's no furniture. No furniture. So, I mean, I don't know if you heard, you may not have, but I was, um, I'm the Zillow offers, um, I'm the Zillow offers broker partner in Sacramento. So the listing inventory is good. Oh, I, 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 I think you might have mentioned, I can't remember. So does that mean that everybody that goes to Zillow offers um, and Zillow buys their house, then, then they turn around and flip it, let's say, and sell it. You're the agent that sells it. And does the acquisition, yeah. So I process the acquisition and do, and do the sale. It's not really a flip, but yeah, that's what. You process the acquisition. Oh, oh, oh. So like, so Zillow says, we'll, we'll give you, two, you know, 480 for this house. And if they say yes, then you go over there and, or you talk to them about it. Is that yeah. how it works? Yeah, kind of. We, I mean, then I have an agent who just processes it, it, right? So, but that's on pause right now because no one could go into anybody's house. So, uh, so we, we have that pause, but that's why I have, uh, quite a few vacant listings. Fascinating. That's great, dude. Yeah. yeah exciting. Great. I mean, biggest opportunity for real estate in the country, I would say, right? I mean, yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Um, so, um, man, you really, that's so much information from you always, dude. What else? What other, <laughs> you-, you know, I think that, um, like just you know normal like health i know you're big into health and just yeah i mean i think it's a good you know it's weird it's a weird time right but you know i think this change it kind of changes everything and everybody used to say you know save for a rainy day but now it's like save for a rainy year or half a year or or, you know what i mean i think it's really gonna be a good thing in the in the long run because it's gonna make people better savers it's gonna make people more conservative um, which, you know, is good. I think Americans in general are, are, are too liberal with their money. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, um, you know, but, but it's, it, and, and I think a lot of people are also learning to, um, to not, you know, have to constantly move forward on stuff. You know what I mean? We get in that habit, right. Of just like, what are we doing next? What are we doing next? And now it's like, there's only so much you can do next. You know what I mean? So, so enjoy the time you have with your family and, and, you know, just enjoy it. That's, I mean, that's, I don't know what else to, it's interesting. There's nothing you can do about it. You know what I mean? When it's, when, when stuff is ready to open back up, your politician will let you know, and that'll be that. <laughs> you know? Cool, man. Well, I appreciate your time greatly, always. It was good to, just to see your face and hear your Yeah, voice. my pleasure. Thanks uh, Thanks yeah. for reaching out, and um, let's, uh, let's stay in touch for sure. Yeah, man. Cool. Thank you. Wow. I really got a lot out of that. I hope you did, too. If you did, which you better have, go ahead and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Like us everywhere subscribe on YouTube, all those things, share with a friend, and we'll see you next time on The Hustling Agent.